Hi everyone, today I'd like to talk through a synthesis of this molecule on the screen now. This is called hydroxychloroquine and it's a pharmaceutical agent. I'll be running through a quite classical disconnection approach to this, together with an indication of how you might perform a forward synthesis using those disconnections. If you find this presentation helpful, please do consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. That really helps me work out what sort of videos to do next. Okay then, so hydroxychloroquine, this is a pharmaceutical that's used to prevent and treat malaria. It's also one that's been around in the news a lot, particularly in 2020. But for this video, I'm just going to do an analysis of the functional groups and have a think about how we might plan to make it from scratch. So as always, first I'll just identify the functional groups. This is an aryl chloride. We've got a bicyclic aromatic system here. This is known as a quinoline. I'm not going to go into the chemistry of that type of system. Suffice it to say that this ring on the right-hand side is more electron deficient and more pyridine-like than the ring on the left-hand side. I have two amines, so I have an amine here, a secondary one, and a tertiary one on the right-hand side, and I have an alcohol at the end. So there's quite a lot of functionality here, and it's quite a long molecule. So one thing I should really do early in a disconnection approach is to disconnect somewhere in the middle to break it into two halves and make my life simpler, just making the two smaller halves rather than dealing with a complicated molecule all the way through a synthesis. So I think the strategic cut here is at the amine. So I'm going to be doing a carbon heteroatom disconnection. And there's two choices here. I could take option one and split there. The sort of chemistry that would be useful there, as forever with an amine, would be a reductive amination. But the alternative disconnection is to cut at the aromatic ring instead, disconnection two. Now actually substituting onto a benzene ring will use some different chemistry than a reductive amination, but basically we're going to say some sort of substitution reaction. Now I can see ways forward disconnecting this in both ways, but for this video I'm going to focus on the substitution method here. One of my previous videos, Retrosynthesis 5, is all about reductive amination, so you can find out about that sort of chemistry in that video. So taking a CN disconnection, while well, I envisage using the nitrogen of the amine as a nucleophile, so for my quinoline ring system, I need to make sure I've got a leaving group and quite a good one there would just be another chloride on position four on that ring. And that means I should just be able to react with this primary amine and go directly to my product. So a mechanism would look something like this, where we get nucleophilic attack at that position on the pyridine-like ring and can delocalize negative charge to the nitrogen atom. That will give me this intermediate. Now I'd plan to have a base in there as well, and that would be able to remove a proton as and when I need it to, which is here. In fact, this other nitrogen in this molecule might do that job for me. And then to finish off, I can regain aromaticity by kicking out the chloride to give me my product there. So there's a valid route for me to go backwards, which is actually an SNAR type reaction, a nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Now back to the retrosynthesis. I'm going to deal with the aromatic quinoline ring system first. So some of the classic ways of making these are to build on the heterocyclic components onto a benzene precursor. So in my retrosynthetic analysis, as we've just seen with that forward synthesis, this is actually an aryl chloride in a reactive position on this ring system, more so than the other chlorine on the left-hand side. So we should really disconnect that first, and I'll do a functional group into conversion. So to install a halogen in that position, I go back to the hydroxyl group, and that's because I can just use POCl3 to do the conversion, again, just by an SNAR type reaction. The mechanism will be to use this nucleophilic hydroxyl group. I'd start by using those nucleophilic oxygen lone pairs and forming a bond to the phosphorus. Phosphorus oxygen bonds are very strong. And we can do some sort of substitution reaction for the chlorine, depending on how you want to draw it. Maybe I could kick that up and down as well. So this is either an SN2 type process or an addition elimination. Doesn't really matter which. That makes a really good leaving group now because I can form a phosphorus oxygen double bond on there if I make it leave. So that's a really good thermodynamic driving force. So the chloride that's kicking it around can come in as a nucleophile and do the SNAR reaction. So now just popping back to the molecule in blue, we can kind of see how this helps us out. Because in solution, these hydroxypyridine type ring systems, you can adjust the pH, for example, but they'll exist as in two tautomeric forms. And this 1,4 pyridone system gives us a big clue as to how to disconnect this further. Okay, so we're going to build this molecule around the central benzene ring here. So there's three substituents that I could chop off. So it's important that we think about the impact of those substituents on any future reactions. This chlorine is an electron donating group. This nitrogen is also an electron donating group, but a carbonyl group would be an electron withdrawing group. So from standard benzene chemistry, we know that this would be ortho para directing. This nitrogen would also be ortho para directing, but the carbonyl would be meta directing. Now this shows that we don't really want to take the chlorine or the nitrogen off. If I were to disconnect the chlorine, the other two functional groups would be directing to this top position here in the circle, so the chlorine wouldn't go on in the right position. If I disconnect the nitrogen, maybe do some sort of nitration chemistry, I'm more likely to direct to one of these two positions, 
and not get the reaction I want either. So the final part in the logic is that we have to disconnect here. Now I'm just going to leave an X in the final position on there for where we'll do a substitution. And one thing we could notice here is actually the chlorine and the nitrogen both direct to the appropriate position on the benzene ring. So we're actually set up for an intramolecular reaction here if we can make this intermediate, clicking the X off as a leaving group. So this seems like a good intramolecular process. And to be honest, we might just need to heat it to get that to go. Now, how to deal with this substrate? So we need to break it somewhere in the middle. And to me, it seems okay to disconnect in this position. And maybe we could do some sort of conjugate addition. Because if I had this meta-substituted aromatic amine, I could maybe just do conjugate addition onto a triple bond and get the product that I want. But there's actually a problem here in that if I were to react these two together and do conjugate addition, we'll be going by the alenic enolate and there'll be absolutely no way that we'd be able to stop it forming the trans double bond instead. And if we have that trans double bond in place, we'll never be able to get our reacting centers here and here close enough together. The CC double bond has quite a lot of restricted rotation and it'll be pointing apart. So I'm going to have to scrap this plan for now. But I can do a sneaky extra disconnection here that gets around that problem. And that's to use something where the cis and trans geometry doesn't matter. And the way that you could do that is to use a substrate that's such as this one that's derived from a malinate. Unfortunately, I can't have a triple bond in the middle here. But what I can do is install a leaving group there. So when I do conjugate addition, I can E1CB off that methoxy group. Now, I don't really want to carry these X's around any longer. And because we've got an intramolecular reaction being proposed here, I'm going to switch out my X's to just be OME. We can see that in this first molecule in green. If I make that OME, I'd expect the nucleophilic attack to still happen and kick out methoxide. And to solve the geometry problem, I've got another ester on here. And we'll see how we can deal with that in a second. Now, these sorts of malinate substituents are reasonably easy to get hold of. To disconnect, we'd go across the bottom here. That's an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl. So we could do an aldol condensation here to take me back to dimethyl malinate and methyl formate. Well, actually, we have to be a bit careful here because if I do that aldol condensation, I might not keep the methoxy group still on there. I might kick out a hydroxide instead. So a better reagent for this would be trimethoxymethane, which then can generate the reactive electrophile in situ and make sure we still end up with an OME in the product. Now, just finishing off on my benzene substituent here, I'm, I'm pretty certain I could buy that amine. But if we really had to disconnect it, well, they're meta-substituted. So I'd need to have an electron withdrawing group. Both of them are electron donating groups. So I'd need to do a functional group into conversion first, maybe make the nitro group. That would be an electron withdrawing group. That would allow me to put the chlorine on if I just start with nitro benzene. So going forwards, I would just chuck in Cl2 in the presence of a Lewis acid, say iron trichloride, to give me the meta product. Functional group into conversion, well, that's just a reduction. So easy ways of doing this would be to use tin and HCl. And then we're good just to do the conjugate addition to take me back to that intermediate. Now, just tracing back through, we've still got that spare green group, the extra ester, which will still be present here on this intermediate in my disconnections. Now, actually, this is a really good place where we could get rid of it if we inserted a step. There's a chance here to do an easy decarboxylation reaction. So that would be using something like sodium hydroxide to hydrolyze the ester and heat. And we'll lose CO2 gas as a driving force there. So now back to the top, we've got the second component that we need to deal with, the aliphatic system. Now we've still got several functional groups in here, and I'm sure there's loads of ways of doing this. But whenever we've got multiple functional groups like this, we should have a check on what their functional group relationships are. We have a one, two, three, four set up on the left-hand side, and a one, two to the hydroxyl group from the amine. So same principles as before, we should really do a disconnection that breaks it up as much as possible. So this amine is looking pretty useful. I don't really want to take off any of the groups that are just dangling on the end. We can disconnect on the left-hand side here, and it's just an aliphatic amine, which is really good for reductive amination as a disconnection. But now we have a problem for selectivity, of course. Although we want this secondary amine to react and condense and form an amine so that we can reduce it out to form the amine that we want, there's another amine over here, which arguably is more reactive. You might end up forming rings or polymers if you tried to do this. So we're going to need to mask this somehow. We can't have two amines floating around trying to do one selective reductive amination. And the clue for going forwards here is that the 1-4 relationship between those two functional groups is a strong clue that we should be heading down a route involving umpalung chemistry. Umpalung is where you have a reverse polarity nucleophile or electrophile. And actually, there's a couple of those that involve nitrogen. And one that could, we could use here, for example, would be to use a nitroamine. We can deprotonate on this position because that's an acidic proton to make a soft nucleophile. So we can kill two birds with one stone here. And rather than having this amine, we'll just have a nitro group instead. So that's a functional group into conversion to give me this intermediate, which we can then disconnect using conjugate addition yet again. To take me back to nitroethane, 
which is readily available, and acrolein, so that's this alpha, beta, and saturated aldehyde, which is also readily available. And the final bit to finish off this synthesis, we just need to pop back up to the top and make this amino alcohol here. This is just a 1,2 difunctionalized compound, which I think is best to disconnect here. And that's because this hydroxyl group bit at the top has an epoxide written all over it. So a 1,2 disconnection will just take me back to ethylamine, which is available, and ethylene oxide, which is also available. Now, I slightly skirted over one issue that we have to deal with in the forward synthesis here, and that's how we do this functional group into conversion because a nitro group to an amine is easy enough using some sort of reduction chemistry. But we were also planning to do some reduction chemistry for the reductive amination. So we might just have to be a little bit careful about what we do there. One other concern that I have here is actually with the hydroxyl group at the top here, there is a risk that this amino alcohol system will cyclize on a carbonyl rather than doing the reductive amination that I want. That's quite a good way of forming a heterocyclic ring system. So we really should be thinking about a protecting group on that hydroxyl group. So now I just want to discuss the forward synthesis and bring all of these ideas together. Okay, then our forward synthesis should look something like this. I'm going to start with nitroethane and I need to treat it with a base. Well, if I was actually doing this in practice, I might have a think about what sort of bases I can get away with here. But for certain, I could just use sodium hydride just to deprotonate it fully. Second step, chuck in our acrolene. That will give me my 1,4 substituted product. The other starting material was ethylamine, and I'm just going to react that with ethylene oxide. The primary amine should be sufficiently nucleophilic to do that. And because we can release the strain in that three-membered ring, this reaction should be quite efficient to give me this amino alcohol. Now, as I said before, there's a bit of a worry here that if we try to just combine these two molecules together, we could form a five-membered ring with the oxygen and the nitrogen, which isn't what we want to do. So I need to add a protecting group. And we'll see why in a second, but I think a really smart one here is to use a benzyl protecting group on that hydroxyl group. So I'm just going to modify my synthesis and take that hydrogen off and put in a second step, sodium hydride to deprotonate the alcohol. Three, I'm going to use benzyl bromide and put a benzyl group, that's BN, on that hydroxyl group. You're completely free to pick other things that would work here. I'm just conscious that this one might be a smart move for deprotection later. Okay, so my plan is to add these two together and do a reductive amination. Now, I should be careful about my reducing agent here. We have a nitro group, which is susceptible to lots of types of reduction, particularly those involving hydrogen and the metal surface. The same is also true with this benzyl protecting group. But there are standard ways of using nucleophilic reducing agents in reductive aminations. So I just add catalytic acid to form the imine between the aldehyde and the secondary amine to condense the secondary amine with the aldehyde to form the imine or the aminium ion. They're in equilibrium anyway. And if I do this in the presence of sodium cyanoborohydride, the moment that aminium forms, that will just get reduced. But this reducing agent won't touch the aldehyde itself. So this reduces the aminium ion only, which is this molecule drawn in red here. So after reductive amination, we'll have this compound. And now we can see why it might have been a smart move to pick the benzyl group, because I can do a reduction now that will change out both the nitro group and deprotect the alcohol. I don't think we need that alcohol protected through any more steps. So loads of types of conditions that we could use here. I'm just going to, for the sake of it, use hydrogen and rainy nickel. It's quite a common lab reagent for doing this. That will give me the amine on the left-hand side and the free hydroxyl group on the right-hand side. And now this is our completed key fragment. I'll just note now that the most nucleophilic part of that is the nitrogen lone pair here. That nitrogen lone pair is higher in energy than the oxygen lone pair, for example, while they're both neutral. But also, although there is another nitrogen lone pair on the tertiary amine, if a tertiary amine acts as a nucleophile, it will just reverse because it's got no hydrogens to lose in a second step. So I'd expect the primary amine to do what we need it to do. Just dealing with the aromatic part of the molecule, starting with nitrobenzene, we can chlorinate in the, the meta position just using standard nucleophile electrophile chemistry of benzene rings. Can just mix it up a bit with our reducing agents. Maybe I could use tin and HCl here. That's a particularly good set of combinations for aromatic nitro groups to give me the aromatic amine. So the plan was to do conjugate addition onto this malonate derivative here. That will come directly from dimethyl malonate via an aldol condensation, where we could just heat this up with trimethoxymethane. Next step, just to do the conjugate addition, we can just add those directly, probably heat it up as well. Now, I'm not really expecting to isolate this molecule in the middle because, as we said before, this will likely react with itself in an intramolecular sense. Sodium hydroxide and at high temperature will hydrolyze the ester and do a decarboxylation. I can just use POCl3. Well, you can draw it in either tautomer for your mechanism, but that should convert that oxygen into a chlorine leaving group. And then we've got our key fragments. 
and adding them together takes us directly to the product. If you found this discussion useful, please do give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel. There are definitely loads of alternative syntheses for this molecule. If you have any good ideas, why not drop them in the comments down below? Otherwise, thanks very much for watching this video.